Hey everyone, today we are looking at Gamma OS, specifically improving performance on the RG405V, the RG505, and the RG405M. These devices come with a pretty good Android system, but the journey started where the RG505 didn't have the most ideal Android build. It got better with the RG405M, and my latest review revealed that the RG405V is pretty good. But we can always do with better performance on our devices, so I'm going to test the performance specifically, and then get into some details of what's better on Gamma OS and if there's anything that's not so great on Gamma OS. Okay, so the first thing you will need to do is go onto the Gamma Squeeze website and download the various things. You need to get the ADB Fastboot Plus, so you will click on that. And you will need the Unisoc drivers, so open that. So you'll go here for the ADB Fastboot Plus thingy, and you will download the .exe file. This link that for the Unisoc drivers on Gamma Squeeze website will download immediately. So you'll see uh, there are the Unisoc drivers. Let's open that up. Uh, we want to extract all. Okay. Just going to go back to my downloads folder. There's the Unisoc. There's the Unisoc. I'm going to delete the compressed version. Go here. Get into the Unisoc drivers. Windows 10, if you're oldest version, I'm on Windows 11, but I'll use the Windows 10 folder and just click on driver setup. It's already installed on my computer, so it's probably gonna repair it or something to that effect. Um, say next, finish. Okay, now those drivers are installed. The next thing you need to do is the ADB fastboot. Now this is being blocked, so you just say keep, uh, show more, keep anyway, open file, Say yes. Um, I accept the agreement. Say next. Say next. Create desktop throughput. That, that's all fine. Just say install. All right. So install the ADB driver at the top of the list there. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Okay. So we say finish. Uh, mine's going to say repair because I've already installed it. It's going to go through do all of those things and we close. I don't think I need this open so I'm just going to close it. So the RG405M download is here on the, um, the Gamma OS page. Uh, yeah, you should be able to go to releases here, download the RG405M. But because I'm specifically talking about the RG405V, um, I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. But if this video is old and it's out of date, the best place to go um, Oh, well, if it's old, it'll be on this website, but the best place to go right now is on the Retro Handouts Discord. So I've joined the Retro Handouts Discord here. They have specific um, Discord channels for the various devices. So you'll see RG405. And then if you go to the pinned posts, pinned messages, uh, it's more for the guys that are into coding and all that kind of stuff and things. And here we go. So he's included Admetic RG405V. Um, he says everything is working except the fan. So you can do this. The fan doesn't work. You know, who needs a fan? Um, anyway, and you can use that download link right there. I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to go through that process again. All right. So as a fail safe, um, Gamma, um, Gamma Squeeze recommends this. So um, I'm going to go open a command prompt. So you open here. And we say where.exe fastboot.exe just to make sure there aren't any additional fastboot exe files. There's the ADB and fastboot. It's the only fastboot exe file on the computer. So we're good to go that we haven't double installed. Okay, so that's just a little face fail safe that Gamma OS recommends. Okay, now what you want to do is we go to the device and we go into settings and we scroll down to about, we scroll down to the bottom to the build number. Now I don't think I've done this on this device yet and we tap the build number until, there we go, three, two, 
one, you are now a developer, okay? Okay, the next thing you need to do in settings is go to system, and we scroll down to developer options. Use developer options, but we want to enable USB debugging. So there, we just want to enable that, say okay. There will be a prompt when you plug it into the computer, and we'll sort that out now. The next thing you need to do is just remove your SD card, make sure that your just in case it you know causes any issues, you want to remove that SD card and put it aside. Now we want to take, I was charging this, but now we want to take this and we want to plug this into the computer. All right, so it's going to allow USB debugging. I recommend just saying always allow and say allow. Now what we want to do is open that command prompt again on our computer. So we just say CMD, open command prompts. Now we're going to the command prompt and we type ADB, reboot, boot loader. ADB, reboot, boot loader, press enter. And you'll see a fast boot mode. So now we are in fast boot mode. Okay, the next thing you want to do is there's a, a site on, on the, I'll put the links in the description as well, but there's a website on the Gamma OS, OS set, setup guide that he has personally set up for us to use. All right, so we say connect, and you should see in the corner of fast boot, boot gadgets, and you say connect. Now you click unlock, so we are unlocking the phone so that we can fiddle around with the Android. And you'll see here, it'll say press volume up button to cancel. Do not do that. And now what we do is we press the home screen, the home button. And then you'll see a few more things come up here. Info, unlock, bootloader, success. Okay, so we are on the right track. So now we can close this window. Okay, now we type in the command and the command prompt here. Fast boot, reboot, fast boot. Let me press enter. There we go. You'll see something's happening here. All right. So now we are in the fast boot menu and now we can flash our firmware, which is fantastic. Okay. So now we need to close all our command prompt menus and thingies. So make sure everything's closed. Uh, that website that we used to unlock the device, close that website. Now we need to find that Gamma OS folder that we downloaded. So the RG405V folder that we downloaded. I've already um, unzipped it. Mine is here. Uh, you might need 7-zip to, to unzip that file. I'll put a link to 7-zip below. You extract the Gamma OS file. There is mine there. So if you open it, you can also double check that it is the RG405V. You'll see the RG405V flash partitions.bat. Now that is the file that we want to open. So just make sure that that is the one RG405V flash partitions.bat. It'll open the script, it'll ask you to double check that you are loading the right firmware onto the right device. This is the RG405V, that is the RG405V firmware. We'll wait a few seconds and it's going to do its thing. That's it. It's doing its thing. This does take some time, so just let it do its thing, don't panic. As long as you're seeing the script happening on that command prompt, um, everything is fine and it is doing its, what it needs to be doing. While I'm sitting here getting bored, I'll say that I just received the PowerKitty RGB 10 Max 3 Pro and it is an absolute piece of crap. <laughs> I highly recommend not buying that device. Okay, so it says flash and complete, close this window in 60 seconds. So let's close the window. The next thing we need to do is run this erase user data dot bat script. So let's let that do that thing. So we just say start, uh, connect to Webbrew. You can choose to copy. I'm not going to copy data over from anywhere. I'm actually going to skip this because this is for, I'm actually setting this up for someone else. But here you would 
sign into your Google account, obviously. Uh, skip account setup. It does have the Aurora store. So if you do decide that you don't want all of that set up, it also uses extra um, like background processes and that. So um, it will actually improve performance if you don't sign into Google, but obviously then you don't have the Google services. Um, I'm going to skip it for now. Uh, my friend can sign into Google services when he gets the device. We are going to skip a pin. I mean, it's a gaming device. We really don't want a pin on you. Skip anyway. That's why it's also maybe sometimes better not to be in on your Google services with a, with a handheld, you know. There we go. Now, it boots straight into Digishow. That's one of the huge benefits to this. What you will notice is that there are no paths set up. So you need to link each system to where your games are saved. So I will put this SD card in and li link each system. So you go here, you add more, you find the folder and you link it. So that should be fine. The area where you might run into trouble. So any retro, any system like the old systems, they run on RetroArch. So that should be fine. Um, th that's all set up on here. Where you may run into trouble is if you use high-end systems, for instance, EtherSX is not uh, set up on here for PS2. Uh, PPSSPP is not set up on here for um, PlayStation Portable. So there's a few things you'll need to do, but anything that runs RetroArch, you're good to go. So uh, let's just, I'll just kind of note that's RetroArch, 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 RetroArch. Sony PlayStation, performance on Android is usually better with DuckStation, so you might want to use DuckStation, but this will probably just, because this auto selects, yeah, it's chosen an emulator with a RetroArch. If you run into performance issues, install DuckStation and run your PlayStation games with DuckStation, RetroArch as well, and that's all he's put on you. So if you want to run the higher end systems, um, you might want to check out my Android setup guide or my RG405V setup guide and it'll give you some idea of how to do all of that stuff. I just want to talk a little bit about Gamma OS before we move on to the final performance test to double check, you know, how things worked out. Like I mentioned, you don't have to sign into Google Play services and that will actually improve performance. There is a light version that you can use of Gamma OS, which will have all of that preset to, to maximize performance. So that is good. He's given us a browser, very minimalistic browser, which is quite nice. It, it, each tab opens in a separate thing. So if you go into Task Manager, each tab will be separate within uh, Task Manager. And, and that also improves performance. There's not a lot of background processes. There's extra privacy with that browser. So that's quite nice. And then as mentioned, Digishow is preset and ready to roll. So if all your RetroArch based systems, everything that can run on RetroArch will be able to run on the system straight off the bat. The only thing you will have to do, let's just quickly open RetroArch and see. Now you see everything sets up with RetroArch. There's no decompressing. If we look at the online updater, core downloader, that hashtag means it's already been downloaded. Uh, let's just quickly press A. Yeah already installed. So he's just installed everything because it doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah, so your RetroArch is ready to roll. That's really nice. And you, you can kind of just run with that until you run into problems and then start installing other emulators. Cool. Let's move over to the final performance test. And then one last thing about this is I have now installed it on here. I've installed it on the RG405M and it's breathed new life. We're going to jump to a test of the over sharpening, but it's difficult to show on screen, but what I want to say is that this system is definitely better than the Anbenic system. Like, I can't really think of much that you're going to lose by switching from the Anbenic system to this, apart from getting the better screen, better screen, because now over sharpening has been removed, and better performance. So it really is a no-brainer, and it's quite easy to set up. Just follow the steps, step by step. I'm skipped a step after doing three devices, I got a bit tired and made a mistake. Reached out to Gamma OS, he was very kind and helpful, and he just showed me quickly what to do. But just follow those steps, and it's really, really simple. So do I recommend Gamma OS wholeheartedly? I think it's fantastic. So this is not a super scientific test, it was just for me to get an idea of where we're headed with the performance. And as you can see here, with the stock OS, I had 1x resolution with the same settings as Gamma OS, EE cycle rate at 50%, max overclock at 3, and on Gamma OS I was running 2x resolution with negligible slowdown, 
and the exact same performance on stock OS, but I could only push it to 1x resolution. So there's a marked difference in improvements with PS2. Now, Gran Turismo 4 was a very sort of clinical test because it doesn't work on either platform very well. But what you notice here is same settings on stock, same settings on Gamma OS. I'm running Gamma OS at 1x resolution with a better FPS. I can't see the FPS, it's too small on the screen, but it stays out of the red most of the time and it felt more playable. So what I mean by that is on stock OS, I can't recommend anyone try that game on stock OS. It, it's just too slow and too frustrating to play. Whereas on the Gamma OS, it's more playable, it's more fluid. So if you're a huge fan of the game, you can actually play it, you know?